Hello, in this video we look at ordinal logistic regression, specifically the proportional odds model in ordinal logistic regression. Now as a brief reminder what the logistic distribution looks like when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is pi over the square root of three is this and the cumulative distribution function is this uh, function here. Now the development for uh, ordinal logistic regression is this. Let's let y star be continuous and then I can already see but wait wait we're assuming that y is ordinal. I know but the development the underlying development sort of assumes there's a latent variable or a continuous variable underneath that we're not observing. So let's let y star be continu a continuous random variable. Let x be a vector of covariates that influence y star and let's assume that y star can be modeled with this linear function with some unknown beta coefficients. Now here epsilon is logistic it's a logistic distribution mean zero and some standard deviation and note that y is an observation or person I think you know some reason I think of as a person this in this example now, why is it called logistic regression? Because we assume this error term uh, follows a logistic distribution. Now, what if our epsilon followed a standard normal distribution? Well, then we'd call this ordinal probit regression. What if the error term followed a gumbo distribution? Well, then we'd call it ordinal complementary log log regression. What if it followed a Cauchy distribution or error term? Well then we'd call it ordinal Cauchy regression. And uh, you know so it depends what the error term is is what area that we're in. So we're going to assume it's a logistic distribution so we're in ordinal logistic regression. Now the way this is done, okay forget this side for a second, we're going to create a new variable called y okay so and it's going to be based on a continuous variable so here y will equal one when our continuous variable is less than or equal to some c1 and c stands for category one y will be two if it's between c1 and c2 and it goes all the way down to j so y will equal j when it's between these two cutoffs, Cj minus 1 and Cj. Now, y actually can be thought of as a multinomial distribution. There's j categories, and it is. So yi is a multinomial distribution with n equal 1, right? There's only one observation. And then each, each category has a certain probability of being in that category, right? So we can think, and then to the probably mass function for yi would be this. It's the it's the probability of being in category one and then raised to this indicator variable. It's either a one or a zero. So um, and dependent upon where that observation uh, fell. So if it if it were a two, then this would be a zero and this would be a one and these would be a zero. And so we can think of this product as the sum the sum Oh, not the sum, the product. So this is a product, not a sum. And the yi's are either 0 or 1. So each, each observation, each yi, gets j little yi j's, you know, and they're all zeros or 1's. Now, note that the correct way to say this is in quote in quotes here proportional odds model for ordinal logistic regression right most people just say the proportional odds model and the reason is is most people use the logistic regression because of the ease in the interpretation of the coefficients but really you need to say put the four ordinal logistic regression because there's proportional odds models for other other uh, distributions too so, 
the proportional odds model for ordinal logistic regression models the cumulative probability as opposed to the probability of a category. Now, if we were modeling this, then it would be multinomial logistic regression. And actually, we'll probably do a video on that relatively soon. But so this, in this video, we're doing ordinal logistic regression. So we're modeling the cumulative probability. So we're going to develop the, the uh, continue the development. And let's look at category one. So J equals one. So that means that, right, we want to model the probability that Y is less than or equal to one. And since it's actually only one category, we could technically put equal signs there. But for general purpose, we'll leave it like this. But this is equivalent to our continuous variable being less than or equal to that cutoff. These are the same probabilities. Then we're modeling that continuous with this linear model. And now note in this beta, there's several, it's a vector, so there's several beta coefficients. And the first one, beta zero, um, is usually the intercept term. And that corresponds to a, a column of all ones right here. And then the beta 1 through beta, you know, k, you know. So there's lots of them. So when we subtract this to the other side, we're going to take out that beta 0 and then leave all the rest with this. So that's what we do here. So we subtract to the other side, and that's the beta naught. Now this x and this x are slightly different. This x doesn't have the column of 1s. So I put a little curly tail on it to make it different than that. And this is beta 1 because it doesn't have the beta not involved. But there's still it's still a vector. Now, this was a logistic distribution, distributed as a logistic distribution, but we want it to be a mean 0 and standard deviation of pi over the square root of 3. So we multiply it by pi square root of 3 and divide by that unknown standard deviation. We do it everywhere you know, to both sides, and we, we group this and group, you know, keep that separate. But now this is that logistic distribution. Uh, all these are constants, so let's just call it alpha 1. And here, um, the x stays the same, but we'll group all this together and call it uh, beta 1 star. And that is a vector, so it, have, it should have a vector sign above it. But since that's a CDF, that's just this. That's F of L, that logistic distribution, you know, with, with this plugged in. Well, and on the first page, that was this. Okay. So now, let's develop this for just an arbitrary J. So we do the same thing. The probability that YI is less than or equal to J, which is equivalent to um, YI star being less than or equal to j cj I, I go dot 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 because the development is almost a hundred percent the same and we get this so the only notice the only differences are the intercept term we have alpha one and we have alpha j here otherwise these are the same well now let's solve for this piece right here. So we multiply this up and then subtract this over to combine it with this and we, you know I'll let you do the math and we get this. And we have to take the log of both sides to get rid of that exponentiation. Um, and we get this. And so this is actually it. So we model the log of these accumulative odds that we're assuming is a linear function, right? So this is called the cumulative logit function, right? Because this is probably being less than or equal to j, and this is being gre strictly greater than j. So this is an odds, cumulative odds ratio. Um, and so, but we have functions for all, you know, from j equals one to j, to j minus one. But, but wait, there's j categories. But remember, this is a multinomial distribution, and if you have J uh, uh, parameters, J probabilities in that function, that last one, you know, the, then we have to have the requirement that they sum to one, and so that last parameter, pi, you know, K or J, I mean, capital J, 
is actually a function of the previous, so it, it's over parameterized. So we only we only go to J minus one because it's a multinomial distribution. Now, notice that so this is a cumulative logent for category J, which is this. Now, if we do the cumulative logent for category one, it's going to be a hundred percent the same, except for this will be alpha one. Right? Now, if we do it for the cumulative logent for J equal 2, it's going to be this, except for this will be alpha 2. And if we were to plot each of those cumulative logents, they would be parallel lines. And the only difference is this. So that's where the proportional odds comes into play. They're all parallel, so they're proportional to each other. And that's what this the uh, intercept term does. So now, how are we going to find the betas? Well, that now maximum likelihood comes into play. So we, on the first page, we said our the dent, the p, probably mass function of our observation was a multinomial, but we need a sample of size n. So that, and each observation is independent, so it's a product of these uh, probably mass functions. So it's this. And so this is a probability of category J, you know, one of those capital J categories. But we want to model this in terms of cumulative probability. So we can model that as if we, um, for this piece right here, we replace it, uh, the probability of being less than or equal to J minus the probability of being less than or equal to J minus 1. Right? Then what's left over is that probability for that specific category. And then these we we just you know we just model. Um, well it's on the last page, the previous page, which is this. So this was this and that was this. And so now we have equations of our unknown parameters. Um, one one note here though, when it, when probability of yi being less than or equal to capital J, so that means it's one of those categories that has to be one. So we have to substitute that into this, and also over here, um, when J is one, the probability that y is less than or equal to zero, that means it's not in any of the categories. That's probably zero because it has to be one of those categories. That's why we created it. And so, to maximize this, then you use one of the optimization algorithms. There's plenty out there. We're not going to discuss that in this video. But, it should be noted that, um, here's a couple notes, first of all. The underlying continuous variable, Y star, is not needed in any of this development. But, it was needed in the development of this, you know, this procedure, this method but it's not needed to maximize and find those coefficients or the parameters. Uh, ordinal logistic regression comes standard in both R and SAS. In R, you say library mass, which comes with the, the default distribution, and it's the function P-O-L-R. So that's uh, it's polytomous ordinal logistic regression. And that means that polytomous is like multinomial has lots of categories and that's ordinal logistic regression and for SAS it's proc logistic it just it comes out of the box that way now um, that's all I'm going to talk about in this video about uh, ordinal logistic regression hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye